We're glad you're with us tonight. We have very special guests with us all the way from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. That is Kevin and Teresa Tabucci, and they pastor the Canadian Revival Center. So if you like revival, that's the center, right? It's the center. And uh, so tonight we've got them with us and you're in for a treat. We've been, I've been able to visit a little bit with them on the way up to the studio and just been so encouraged and excited for their story and testimony. And we kind of talked a little bit about contending for the faith and contending for uh, Christ and the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, they've just got some super good testimonies that I'm looking forward to. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves? And that's probably better than me getting all your facts wrong and you can well, get them right. Well, first sure. of all, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you, uh, Lonnie. And uh, we're, we're learning about yeah. other parts of Saskatchewan we haven't visited yet. This and awesome. uh, <laughs> so it's a real honor to be with you because um, every time we get together with you, you're, you're really exhorting us, you're encouraging us. We've had you preach at the church a number of times and, and at the, the Christian school. And so, yeah, this just seems so natural for us to get together tonight to do this here in the studio. Um, so you want me to begin just to share a testimony about myself and where things began? Yeah, just how you guys got started. And, yeah. you know, I think it's a real encouragement to, yeah. for people, just real people. You yeah, know, you're, yeah, uh, absolutely. Teresa and I actually um, uh, met, first met in a community called Sioux Lookout. And I, I revisited this with Lonnie tonight in the, in the drive up. And I realized that he was actually, he had actually visited the very church I was in um, back in the 1990s. So, and then I found out another uh, connection was Gordon Williams, who was from Ontario. And uh, so it's amazing how Holy Spirit really knits us together in this, in this amazing way. And so I was, I left Toronto after I was uh, on the police department. I had, I had um, served in the churches down there for a while and, and connected with uh, David Maines. I actually um, gave my life to Christ watching uh, Huntley Street mm. and on TV as an officer. I was a police wow. officer at the time. And mm -hmm. hey, David was my pastor. That was church for me, was was actually sitting in my living room, you know, afternoon shift, coming home, night shift, that type of thing, and finding out and discovering about God and the Holy Spirit and the Bible. Um, I had friends that were with me that, that encouraged me in the things of God, Lonnie, but David filled in the blanks. Oh, and yeah. and I, you know, we just need that when you're coming into faith in Christ, you have to make those those uh, decisions real. And I just found that David really just nailed it as an evangelist. He helped me to understand in, in salvation. But mm -hmm. so I left Toronto. There was an invitation to go up to the north, and and I met Teresa, and I started flying in the north into the northern communities with her dad Ian. And uh, man of God, we love him. He's yeah. he's been yeah. a real encouragement in our lives. Yeah. And you were saying, was it right? You said Teresa was chasing you or you were chasing Oh, her. man, I didn't know we were going to get he into that. Oh, just me. wondering. <laughs> I think we were chasing each other. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll let her answer that question. Oh, boy. But oh, boy. Yeah. No, I think you were chasing me. Okay. I think that's the way it was. And we met at, in the church in Sioux Lookout. I had gone and done my nursing and came back and just began to serve. And they say, you know, one of the best places to meet your future spouse is a church. That's right. So I got to watch him in full action, loving God, being himself in his element. And I loved that. And I, I was really attracted to that in you. And so maybe I was chasing him. But here we are today. I mean, we're going to talk about 20 Holy some years later. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We're going to talk about 27 years later. 20, It'll be 27 yeah, years yeah. we've been we've been married and uh but um yeah, it was a, it was an amazing ad adventure there because mm -hmm. when I first got there, um she was dating um, a man, he's a nice young man, but uh his uh, her father came in uh, to early morning prayer and these guys were really okay. serious Lonnie about getting answers. So they this this is what we need to do. We need to go back to the places where God revisits us and he helps us to understand Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is a person. Holy Spirit led us into some moments where we were praying. And he said, I really need prayer for, for my, my daughter to just, you know, uh, get on track with, with relationally who she should be with. So anyways, I wasn't going to share this, but I will share it. But anyways, he's a successful guy today. He's a doctor, but and we love him. But um, uh, Ian said, I, I really believe that she has a call in her life. She needs to to, to honor the Lord. And so we, we, uh, we prayed, 
we got together as, as he wasn't my father-in-law then, but soon to be father-in-law. We prayed and it wasn't within a matter of weeks mm. that, uh, you know, that relationship had dissolved. Mm. And uh, then I had to reassure this, uh, my father-in-law, who wasn't my father-in-law at the time, that I, I really had no interest Your in Your motives her. were not My so motives, I... <laughs> pure as the driven soul. God. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't just trying to get in there and use a prayer meeting to break up that relationship. <laughs> oh. But uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was a youth pastor at the time. She was um, a worship, the worship leader. We were both doing worship. And, and there, was a, there was a natural part of this time of worship that really yeah, was was a bonding time yeah. where where we really yeah. love to spend that time in the things of God mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. and so your your ministry kind of started then really in Sioux Lookout yeah and ministering in Canada mm-hmm. and then so now tell us tell me a little bit of you know kind of how you got really introduced to the Holy Spirit and then you know some of the things you were telling me about that you began to see happen to you as a result of that. Like, yeah. talk about that a bit. Yeah, that's that's such an exciting part, a risky part, you know, a part where we, we're, we're innocent. And I think God loves innocence within people. He recognizes that. You know, when he sees somebody who's who's guarded or religious, you know, he can't work through that. But, but I was innocent and I said, I want all of who you are. Mm-hmm. There wasn't like, little pieces or areas that I wanted out of that. You know, I when I was an officer, I really wanted to go after law enforcement, be an officer, so I, I, I went for it. But when I became a believer, Lonnie, and I, I, I opened the Bible, I'd read about the gifts of the Spirit. I'd read about Holy Spirit, and I didn't get it. And then someone told me, well, you need to be baptized in Holy Spirit and in fresh fire. And I thought, fire, that sounds a little bit scary to me. And, and <laughs> what do you mean baptized? I was, I was baptized in water. I never heard about this baptism of Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And to say a person, what do you mean? Like, can you see him? Can you, can you hear his voice? What does he look like? Uh, what does he look like? Right. You know, <clears throat> does he have a fragrance? Well, I learned later that he does have a fragrance. God will manifest himself. He will, he will, he, there's actually, and there's a smell of the devil too. I mean, he smells terrible, but yeah. God has a fragrance about him. And, it, and so we learn this, but so speaking in tongues and, and getting baptized in the spirit, and then going into this adventure to find out that the gifts of the spirit, the nine gifts, mm-hmm. word and knowledge and, and mm-hmm. tongues and interpretations, uh, discerning of spirits and healing and miracles and mm-hmm. prophecy and have a word of wisdom, word of knowledge. I think we covered the nine. But the gifts of the spirit became um, such a such an amazing, amazing part of, of a relationship because we would, you know, I would say, hey, I was praying for you, honey, this morning. Does this mean anything to you? And she, 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 there were times mm-hmm. when there were really, um, pivotal moments in our relationship where where God came in through the gifts. And mm-hmm. it was like, man, you can live this husband and wife, parents and children. You can really mm-hmm. live the life mm-hmm. the way scripture says. And I'm not saying we're perfect at it, yeah. but I'm saying, you know what? With the lifestyle of young people today and and there's so much interest in, in gaming and this and that. We're not anti-gamers. So if someone's watching and they like Fortnite, hey, you know, I'm not going to jump on that. <laughs> but how are we going to compete with any of this? How, how do we as parents or how do we as spouses contend for the faith mm-hmm. with all these props and things in, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our, you know, the generation we're living in? And really what it is, is Holy Spirit as a person living with him 24-7. We talked about this. And then moving into the gifts of the Spirit where, where this becomes the new normal. You just start living this. This is day and night. This is for real. And we test we test ourselves and we just we just start doing it as a part of, of living. So give us give us a few of the stories we were talking about, Kel, Kevin, about um, you know, kind of some of the and, and maybe walk us through a little bit, you know, because I was telling Kevin that, you know, I really like it when people explain what's going on. And I realize, you know, I, you can give somebody the saws and the hammers and all the tools, but then they do have to, you know, be willing to step out and use them. And that's really kind of, I see the gifts of the spirit as tools that you yeah. have to be willing to step out and use, you know, to build things in the kingdom of God and, and into people's lives and, yeah, uh, for sure. you know, to minister to them. But oftentimes people aren't 
maybe, you know, really sure what to look for? Or, or, you know, when you say that the Holy Spirit spoke to me, well, what does that look like? How do you explain, you know, something like that? And I know when it's spiritually discerned, you're trying to naturally explain something that's spiritually discerned. But yet, you know, I think that it, it, things can be learned. If they can be learned, they can be taught. Right, 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 right. Yeah. That you you can teach people to function and operate and cooperate. Yeah. And so kind of what's been your experience along that line and some of the things that you've seen and sure. Um maybe what I could do is go back to the the um the time I was in, in uh Bible school in first year and I'll use a scripture maybe as a reference as first Corinthians twelve. It says, Brothers and sisters, I want you to know about the gifts of the Holy of the Holy Spirit. You know that at one time you were unbelievers. We all were. Um, you were somehow drawn away to worship statues of, of gods. And, and you know, today in our culture, it's not maybe gods of, you know, um, uh, statues or things like that. But these are, these are other types of gods. Either these are gods that are capturing the hearts of people, um, covetousness or greed or lust or whatever. The god of entertainment or something that they couldn't even speak. And so these, at the time Paul was writing this, and I don't want to get into teaching, he was, he was really talking about, you know, um, gods that occupied the heart of, of people. And so when I was in Bible school, I, I re- remember uh, uh, praying and asking God with innocence. And we got together with all the, the Bible college team. And there was about 12 of us and there was about 70 in the youth group. We started with three mm-hmm. and we moved to 70 and, and I just said to the Sunday school class, would you like, I picked the smallest church in the area to go to when I was in Bible school. And I said, I just want to move in everything in the dimensions of God because God's not linear. You know, he says the height, width, length, and the surpassing depth of his love. So God, God is dimensions. And I love the dimensions of God. And so I, I started to realize the gifts of the spirit were for everybody. Mm. You know, Pentecost was the birthplace of, of of the church, yeah. And Joel came in. I'm sorry, Peter came in and prophesied what Joel said. Yeah, you know. So your sons and daughters will mm. will will yeah. prophesy, and your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will have visions. We're going to get back to that yeah. later out in the broadcast. But so this was really neat because I I went into a youth meeting. I remember once, and and um, we I was actually a youth pastor at the time. I was in in college, and and I said to the guys, I said, what did what did you see? In the service, what did God do in your life? And and we were so interested in, in growing, and um and this this uh worship team came in. There is um there was three of them. Uh, it was on a Sunday. I remember. I'll never forget this. You know, this is the thing about the gifts of the Spirit. They leave an imprint. God comes and He takes His hand. He puts an imprint. He literally, He really pushes into your very being, your heart. And you begin to, you remember these things just like they happened yesterday. And this happened over 25 years, 30 years ago. Mm. And so I'm sitting in the service and I was praying and praying and praying, asking God for, you know, visions and so forth. And and I was sitting there as worship, you have my eyes closed. And all of a sudden I get this vision of four people on the platform. And there was a, this, this man who was very large, he was, you know, he was, he was obese and he was even having trouble walking. He was one of the, the singers, and then his daughter was there. And then um, there is there is another another singer. And then there is then there was somebody in this vision that seemed to be part of her her life, and it seemed like he was he was supposed to be he was going to be. Uh, and this is a thing about interpreting visions. You have to you have to help that person to really understand what you see. And I thought this guy looks like he's he's married or something or attached to this this woman. So after the service, and you don't want to tell somebody who's visiting your church, you know what? I had a vision of you today that you're going to lose a lot of weight. But I went up to this man and I said to him, I said, "Can you ever been back to that church?" No. no. <laughs> I said to him, um, "Can I can I share something with you as a Bible college student who doesn't know anything, and I don't claim to know like Paul said." You know, this was in his life. He said, I don't know anything. All I know is that God is amazing. Yeah. And we can learn so much from Holy Spirit. And I said to him, in this vision I just had of you, you had lost a lot of weight. And I said, there seemed to be a fourth person in your trio. And I said, I didn't even know what a prophecy was. And I said, I say to you today, <laughs> like, what, what are you saying, Kevin? I say to you today that uh, 
you know, and this this is someone coming from a non-Christian background whose parents did not want me to become a Christian who were Buddhist. This did not yeah, come- Yeah, your mom and dad, this. You yeah. didn't grow up in this. No. Okay. No. So when you're getting this, so now, was it a, like an open vision? You had your eyes closed and you see a picture? Is that yeah. what's happening? Yeah, I, my eyes are closed and I saw a picture, Lonnie. Yeah. And, and this man was was slender. It was a clear picture. And and so I, I told him and he looked at me and I thought, okay, this is hug or slug time, baby. I mean, he's gonna <laughs> he's either gonna be happy or he's gonna be yeah. upset. He grabbed me. He threw his arms around me and he lifted me off the floor, squeezed me. He was a huge man and dropped me on my, he literally dropped me on my feet. And he said, young man, and there the prophet's finger came out. And he said, he said, the only way that you were going to know the gifts of the spirit is that you are a risk taker and you're going to, you're going to do what it says in 1 Corinthians 13. You're going to have faith. You're going to, you're going to search out the truth through hope. And then you're going to conquer every fear through love. And I went, wow. And those are those scriptures from 1 Corinthians 13. And so he said to me, my daughter is, is, is going to be married to this guy. He's a wonderful uh, singer. And we were asking God to confirm to the gifts of the Spirit. Mm. And you have just confirmed mm. because you were willing. And this is the whole part about the lessons that we're learning. And we still have to do this. We have to relearn this every time we do it. You have to be a risk taker. You have to be willing to ask and find the right, right way. So he says, this, he yeah. says, and I want to lose weight. He says, I'm, I'm losing weight right now. I want to lose weight and the trio is going to be a quartet. And that was the prophecy. Mm. Cool. So beautiful. Your young men will have visions. And that, and you know, the, the exciting thing is, is that, you know, you maybe are not, you're not a 20 year minister. You're not a 30 year minister, you know, as a young person and having a genuine desire. And I think that's where, you know, some of the confusion comes in a little bit is yeah. that, you know, people maybe, you know, we're going to leave it to the preacher. We're going to leave it to the minister, right. to the evangelist, yeah, to yeah, the yeah. visiting ministry. Mm -hmm. And not realizing that this is for all of us, mm -hmm. for Bible school students, for kids, for adults, seniors. That's right. yeah. And oftentimes, you know, you're looking. And if if, if you were to, if I was to ask you, yeah. what did you feel? <laughs> Fear, Fear, interpretation. Exactly. Like I, I felt, I felt vulnerable. Yeah. I felt vulnerability. It's like, okay, you're about to throw away everything that you have strived towards in this church, and you're about to embarrass yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because with the gifts of the spirit, there is risk involved. There is. But the beautiful part is, is that the Holy Spirit is more willing to lead and to minister and to function yeah. than we are to follow. And many times we're looking, so you had a picture. Now you could have ignored that. Right. You could have just said, you know, I just, I saw this picture. My eyes are closed on the screen, yeah. my imagination. Right. Or you can say, you know what? I think, I, I think that this is the Lord showing me this. Yes. And, but if you go by feeling, my feeling is run. My feeling yeah. is don't say anything. My <laughs> feeling is if this yeah. goes bad, yeah. Yeah. right? I'm going but south. I'm yes. going south. <laughs> but faith you know, is the, operates by fact. It doesn't operate by feeling. Not that you can't have feelings, because I'm right. sure you have stories mm -hmm. of when there was the feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's where you don't have to be a beggar when you're a believer. That's and right. You don't have to function by feeling when you can function by faith. Yes. And, but you have to be a risk taker. That's right. Mm -hmm. To step out, right? Yeah. And whether it's the prophetic, the word of knowledge, the wisdom, you know, whatever it is that you're flowing in. Yeah. And uh, and I love that because you know that's an encouragement to young people. It you is know, to to step out. What I you know what I like is this is I often tell people is that it's not what you get that matters; it's what you keep that matters. I love that. Yeah, right. It's yeah. not what you get. You can get a blessing, and then tomorrow you didn't keep any of it, and you're back in the dumpers. Yeah. <laughs> and we want to be able to contend mm -hmm. for the faith from that's Monday good. to Sunday. That's right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. And I don't have to go to the Philippines and be used of God, come back here That's and then right. get depressed mm -hmm. and yeah. give up. And mm -hmm. you know, the church is so hard. People are hard. Da, 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 da. No, no, mm -mm. no. There's no. not an American Holy Spirit. There's not a Philippine yeah. Holy on, Spirit. That's right. There's not a yeah. Russian Holy Spirit. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's one Holy Spirit. Yes. And he functions here exactly like he does. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us the story. Cause you didn't tell me in the truck. Tell, come on. Tell me the story about 
Was it the blind eye you said? The oh, yeah, yeah, eyes? yeah. That was the double double miracle. I was actually, maybe that's a word of knowledge because I was going to go to that next. You were. I'm just. I beat you. <laughs> I beat him. You're, you're, you know, anyways, um, you know, just continuing in the in the gifts of the spirit and uh, training under some some men of God who operate in this um, brother, Ted Shuttlesworth, who was an amazing impact in our life. Um, he never referred to himself as a, a prophet back then or even as an evangelist, definitely. But I would watch um, Ted. We, we flew mm -hmm. down to, to visit him. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's necessary that we do honor the men and women of God, Lonnie, that we're, we're, um, they were, they were kind of like benchmark, landmark places of our life where things pivoted, things turned. And, and uh, so Ted helped me to understand how the gifts of the Spirit operated just by, by watching him. There is, there is an impartation because we're around the men of God. I think in the Bible days, you know, with the prophets and the apostles, they, the people were, there's a transferableness uh of, of the working of God, the works of the Spirit. But um, certainly it's, it's not done just solely by that. But as we're with the men and women of God, just by being with you or Calvin or whoever, we're, we're learning, we're growing. I come in here and there's the presence of God. Mm -hmm. There's a studio where you feel there's a prophetic call on this place. There's a, there's a calling of, there's something that's being birthed in the spirit for our province and our nation right in the mm -hmm. studio. You can feel it. Yeah. It's here. God's here. Yeah. And there's such a vision that you can, you can feel just in the atmosphere here. But Japan, let me get to that story in Japan. That is so epic. Um, again, um, going to this was during the Pensacola revivals, um, in in you know we that was birthed out of out of Florida, and, and so how much time is this now from the time when you were you initially kind of started and Sue Lookout and then because now you're kind of traveling as yeah. an evangelist, right? Like, how many years was that? Uh, how many? about four or five years into yeah four or five years because we were married in ninety four, so it yeah. would have been. 97, 98. Okay. We did a church plant. Yeah. Um, it, two years, we built a church. We were part of a uh, school. We went down for training for that. And I really felt over the course of probably seven or eight years, I need to go into this this thing of evangelism full time. I just didn't understand it. And I, I've, I, there was a visiting evangelist up in Sulaco and I said, how do you do this? And he goes, just jump in. He goes, how do you dive into the water? You dive. And I said, Okay, thank you so much for this. <laughs> this is simple. Well, that clears everything up. I'm as good as gold. <laughs> I'm good to go. I don't have one booking. I don't know anyone who's going to book me. How do you preach? How do you bring the presence of God into the meeting? You know, how do you operate in these gifts and see, you know? And so um, I started to travel. I started to do the works of Christ by by faith in meetings. I remember we fasted for 10 days down in uh, Florida. Yeah. And I was praying, oh God, anoint me powerfully, you know, to do what you're calling me to do. Actually, I didn't pray that. I prayed over those 10 days. We were on water, man. I was like Bambi on ice. I, I, my, <laughs> I, what a cruelty to the body, man, you know, <laughs> but it was our introduction to disciplining our flesh yeah. and, and, and saying, okay, we didn't see God move up until this point in different areas. And the Lord said, I want you to go to these areas and I want you to start s sending letters of repentance. I want you to ask your wife for forgiveness in these areas. I want you to purify your heart. And we started learning about the fire of God and stuff, Lonnie. All this fun stuff, you know, it doesn't sound so fun at the time. But even when we were on that fast, God moved powerfully. And we actually got invited to preach in the church down there on the fast. <laughs> And I'll, I'll, sh I'll share that story after I share about J Japan. But um, so we went, we went to Japan. Um, it was my friend from Bible school who I helped. And I think that's how the gifts of the Spirit work is through love. And the first Corinthians 13 talks about, you know, love is patient, love is kind, love doesn't, you know, keep a record of wrongs. It, you yeah. know, it, you know, it keeps no record of wrongs, goes on and on. And what a beautiful uh, uh, chapter 13 it is, and then it goes in, it says, hopes for all things, beliefs for all things, love never fails. That scripture actually characterizes all of what we're to become as we move into chapter 14, verse 1, where it says, but above all, seek that you may prophesy. Mm -hmm. And and so when I went to Japan, <clears throat> I was fasting, uh, what was it, three, I need to fast more. <laughs> We've gotten out of that and we need to get back to it. But 
three days and and I was in in Japan. I, I think it was in Tokyo. And uh, we were booked for uh, eight meetings during the Pensacola revivals. Now, a, a special series of meetings there would be two meetings. But if you can get eight in one of the largest um, churches in Tokyo, um, we went, we went there. Koiwa. Koiwa, Koiwa church, right. right? And um, so I went in there and the, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, John chapter 9, uh, the, the, the message on the, the healing of the blind man, he said, um, John chapter nine in the fifth service out of eight. And I'm going, okay, the fifth service out of eight. So that's Sunday morning. And you told me, you said, I really feel there's going to be a blind person. God wants to heal. Not just the spiritually blind, but I really yeah. feel he wants to touch physically blind people. Blind people. Yeah. So I'm preparing so I'm this like, okay, message you know. to preach to the <laughs> blind people. Yeah. And, um, and, and so, um, so I went to John chapter nine. I call it the double miracle because um, Jesus healed the blind man um, in, in this in this um, scripture, and it and the blind man then after he was healed, um, he the the church rejected him. It was the religious church; they rejected him, and so it's a double miracle because Jesus heard, and I don't believe he got a text or an email or a phone call. I believe he heard through the Spirit. He knew that this man had, was suffering, and the Bible says in John chapter nine that he went to him, and the man collapsed. He bowed at his feet, and he began to worship Jesus because he recognized that God was interested in more than healing his blind eyes. He opened his heart, Lonnie. Mm. And this is what scripture said. Paul said this in Ephesians, didn't he? In Ephesians 1, 17, 18 and 9, he said, pray that the eyes of your heart be yeah. open, that you can know the hope of his calling. And so I relive that moment right now. I revisit the moment we were during Pensacola revivals when the world was being touched by the power of God. And we went in there on that Sunday morning in the fifth service. Ten minutes into the meeting, I'm preaching strong, you know, believing that there's going to be a blind person healed. And, and there was the no blind people there to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and so there's Perfect. always there's always that moment where you <laughs> think, did I miss here. it? Did I miss God? It's like, you whoa. Know? Yeah, you know, who's blind here? Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> and we're well into worship. And then yeah. all of a sudden, this lady starts walking in with a cane. And but like, but it, during the fasting so time, good. the Lord showed me a picture of a woman uh, dressed. She yeah, was very, yeah. very um, uh, frail. She was very light. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Asian people in, yeah. in that part of the world tend to yeah, be very yeah. light build anyways. But she was very frail and she, was, she had a white walking stick. And she was going like this, like they usually do to test their path. And 10 minutes into the meeting, this vision I saw during the time I was in prayer, um, she walks in on the lower level because there was a balcony, and I'm I'm looking at this and I'm going, "Devil, you you liar!" And I'm I'm sitting there thinking because he was he he had lied to me, and I was going through this battle, and I know you don't, Lonnie, but we go through this battle when we're in the pulpit. Sometime going, I missed it. Did I, miss I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's like I missed it. You know, it's like whoa, what happened here? And and so she came in and I'm I'm literally, you know, now I'm feeling like the man of the God. <laughs> now I'm feeling like I got something to say. And I started praying for people at the close of the service with bad backs. And she starts screaming. Like I mean screaming, screaming, yeah. terrifying screaming. And she says to the interpreter, because I was standing right in front of her, she said, I see the impression mm -hmm. of a person walking back and forth in front of me, and she was born blind. This mm. story I was sharing from John she chapter 9. She's a creamy nine. baby, and born yeah. blind. Yeah, 28 weeks. 20 weeks. Yeah, because yeah, mom only carried her to 28 weeks yeah. and never seen anything no. in her whole life. And I saw her literally jump out of her seat. Her eyeballs yeah. were like pin, like a pinball machine, you know, where the ball, when you hit yeah. it, it's going all over the place. That's what her eyes looked yeah. like. I looked in her eyes and their eyes were just going in mm. all over the place. And, and she goes, I can see, I can see this person in front of me. And I... We kind of lost the moment at that point because there was pandemonium in the service. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's what Jesus did. He just threw everything into a place of into a place of craziness mm -hmm. where people were turning towards God and realizing the Lord was with them. He's God here. was there. He's here. He's yeah. he was present. He was there to touch the lives of people. And we were there for eight days, Lonnie. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, they decided that they were going to go into revival services. Mm -hmm. So the presence of God caused them to believe mm. that their need was for Holy Spirit. Their need was for the gifts of the Spirit. 
and the manifestation of God. There were lineups for healing. Line of hundreds. Of yeah, well, their faith, you know, when faith is elevated, right? I think that that's the difference that a lot of places we get into when faith is not being elevated, you know, fear is operating, doubt is operating, yeah. <laughs> analyzing is operating, mm -hmm. boredom is operating. Yeah, like yeah. there's a lot of things you're trying to combat and work through yeah. to try and get the hearts of people mm -hmm. to believe for these so things, true. you know, and then once they do, yeah. then of course it's much easier for you to begin to flow, That's right. right? Like yeah. the flowing can become stronger and with more frequency. So now when, okay, so when you kind of got this word, like explain a little bit about this woman, like you just felt an impression, you felt like you had the, a reoccurring thought, you had. This was actually in a, in a <clears throat> this was actually just during prayer time and this is why it's so important during prayer that we we recognize that Holy Spirit's gonna work through all of this. Mm -hmm. And so when, on that three day fast, it was actually a vision that I had of her and I was actually looking for her in while you were praying. Yeah, well, I was, yeah. well, during the service while I was preaching, I'm going, where are you? I don't see you. And this is when I, this is when I went into default. This is when I started to, to backpedal and go in. And, and then I can imagine what the Lord was thinking is, it's okay, he'll get this. And so 10 minutes into the meeting, she walked in, right. Lonnie, and there she was. She was the prophetic vision of what was to take place that morning. Yeah. And that's the joy of it. It's not even in seeing the miracles, although those miracles are wonderful. It's knowing that you can communicate with God. You can hear his voice. You can see him. And, and he loves to, he loves our innocence. And if there's anything I need more of, it's just to get back to the place of innocence to yeah. say, I know nothing. And God, I just fall on you in dependency to say, you know, and if I could share one more story about what happened in, in Japan, because there's so many notable miracles there and in, in Northern Canada, in particular, those two places. But I was in, um, I was invited to go to uh, uh, the leadership of leaders um, from the Assemblies of God. And we, we were called in to, um, were you with me then? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I think so. She was called in with me and, and we, we went to this, this meeting where they said, could you teach on the gifts of the spirit? And I'm thinking, and I, so I asked them when I went into the room and, and how long have you men, men of God been in ministry? And they said, 45 years. And I went, wow, I'm not even 45 years old. <laughs> and I just felt humbled. I really did. Cause I was, I was, I was very young. I just turned 60 this year, but I was, uh, how old were we when during the Pensacola revivals? It was, nice. it was 25 years ago or something. Yeah. So so anyways, I was the youngest one in, the, in there by a long shot. And I thought, you know what? I want to honor these men of God. And at the same yeah. time, I need, I've got work to do here in the kingdom. Yeah. Because we, we can't do this COVID mandate thing. We can't do that. We've got to restore the kingdom mandate. Yeah. It's not about the COVID, the, yeah. you know, yeah. the vaccine mandate. It's about the kingdom mandate. So... Mm -hmm. So anyways, I, I, uh, I was in this meeting and I, I said to Holy Spirit, I can't do this unless you come. And this whole thing of leaning into Holy Spirit, um, Lonnie, was just, I, I had, I knew what I was going to share, but I said, this is not going to cut it. Do you I, think it makes a difference whether you lean into the Holy Spirit or you don't lean into the Holy Spirit? Oh man, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, a dependency where you put the whole meeting into a place of of beginning because you pierce the f the flesh the carnal side of man and and you 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 reveal God in that mm -hmm. instant so yes you have to lean into him absolutely and I, I I had my notes ready I'm ready to teach and I said I can't do this so we have to be prepared we have to be you know um believing that God is going to use our innocence and we have to be leaning into Holy Spirit, absolutely. So all those things were there. And in that moment, I looked across the table and you can't prepare to do this because you walk in the room and then God begins to do it. Yep. He could do it right on the set right now with Kelvin or you or my wife. And all of a sudden I looked across the table and I just looked at this woman. And I said um, to the interpreter, could you tell this woman God wants to heal her? Is she sick in her stomach? Now there's either one or two responses you need to leave the room because you're not hearing God and you're teaching us on the gifts of the spirit or this is an answer. She was in severe pain. Mm -hmm. She was instantly healed, Lonnie. And I said, now I can begin to teach you on the gifts of the spirit because God, I, God answered my prayer. I asked him, 
I cannot teach you what I don't practice, so I'm just going to do lean into this. So when that when that took place, then tell us what you were experiencing. Okay, so you've told us a couple times where you've had a picture. Yes, you know your eyes are closed. And yes, you see a picture. You describe that. You minister that as best you can. Sure, because you're really describing what you're looking at. You know, you're trying right. to kind of help people see what you're seeing. So now you were, and I don't know if you had a picture or not. What did you have, like? Did it come yeah. as a thought? Did it come as an impression? Did it come? I simply looked at you, and there, and that was just the thought that immediately yeah. struck me. What what happened there? Tell us what happened there. Well, yeah, that's a that's a really commonly asked question. We travel like, how does Holy Spirit speak to you? Is it an audible voice? Is it a vision? Is it a dream? It's it's all of those things, and God has used different means, and He keeps me guessing right until the last moment. In this case, I looked at her, and it's like. The presence of God was just around her abdominal area. And to me, she just looked sick. There was a presence of, um, you know, Jesus healed people of sickness, disease, or cast out, you know, infirm spirits or demonic spirits. And so that was a spirit of sickness, it was on her, it was gone instantly. Because you you speak right, you know, you speak the light into the darkness. And yeah. you, you command life to to come. So when you looked at her and you can see obviously it's an that, impression. Yeah. Yeah, that she was sick. And when, okay, so when you look at the stomach, what made you like you, you were just kind of drawn to the stomach rather That's than right. the shoulder or the legs That's or it. the brain yeah. or the and so when you're drawn to that now you're willing to step out and say, you know what? I believe that's the Holy Spirit. Yes. And because you could ignore that, right? Right. You could just carry on. Yeah. I mean, you he probably wouldn't be very happy, but you can do it. Yes. And so, you know, because oftentimes these things are, I think people think with the gifts of the Spirit that there's, you know, either a big lightning bolt, big feeling, yeah. like a big whatever, rather than the still small voice and being discerning yeah. That when that thought comes, because you really, you know, this way, I and maybe you think this too, Kevin, that when I get up behind the pulpit yeah. and I'm, you know, and I'm preaching and doing my thing, I am ready yeah. to step out. I'm not sitting there and debating, is this God? Is this me? Is yeah. this, like, I am ready. As soon as I have that, what I feel to be the direction or right. an impression, a thought, yeah. a vision, I'm ready to step out on it. That's right. Right? Yeah. And would Very you true. say, like, is that... Kind of what you Abs feel, or absolutely. I, I, we, you, yeah, you nailed it. We, we, we come prepared as best we can, um, having a full dependency on the Lord that He gave us the Word. You know, He's ready. Um, I was reading something the other day that um, Mary had given to us. She's she's from the church, and she quoted a, a prophet, and she said um, she's quoting from from Joel, but it was this prophet. I think it was Kevin Zadai, and he said. You know, has anything like this happened in your generation? We started to think about what we're going through in our nation of Canada right now and globally. And this scripture just so clicked, Lonnie. But as you go into the book of Joel, I kept reading. And then the Lord said, see this, this scripture from Kim Clement. See, this is what you need to be reading. And I looked at it and said, he gave them uh, new grain, mm -hmm. new oil. Looks like I'm a karate guy. I just, new I grain, just new had Tundi from Nigeria. Yeah. Send me that scripture last night. Wow. That's a good one. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So new grain, new oil, new wine. And the grain is the word of God, of course, and the, the oil, the anointing, and, and um, the wine of Holy Spirit. So God was saying, I am going to replace all of what this affliction has been of COVID upon our nation mm. with Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the new word because he's going to give you the word, Lonnie. He's going to use you powerfully in our nation mm -hmm. of Canada. You're mm -hmm. faithful. Mm -hmm. You've been walking. And I see a picture of you actually walking right now down. Uh, it's just down like a, a, a grid road, just walking down that road. And your your back is a, kind of like the back. Uh, back. Um, you're putting your back to the things that are common to man, where man would be drawn to. And it's like you're, you're just walking indifferent to that. And you're walking towards what God is calling you into. Mm. So that's a picture I see of you right now. It's an amazing picture, one of utter peace. You know, the Lord gives us pictures while we're, you know, the biggest fear I had was actually coming on the set and not being able to bless you with a word from Holy Spirit. That was the biggest fear I had, man, to coming into the set today. But anyways, I want to get back to the story 
um, uh, in uh, you were asking about how we we see God, and we were talking about that meeting in Japan. God did wonderful things with those leaders, Lonnie. Just phenomenal things happened. They were touched by the power of God, and um, I think it's neat that pastors would actually want to be trained that way. I was raised in a church where it wasn't as open, and and uh, it says in Corinthians to. Um, Pursue love, mm. but earnestly desire the gifts. And right. Pursue those gifts. And so hats off to those pastors that said, hey, let's train. Even if it's from someone younger, that, right. was, that was counterculture. Yes, it was very that. counterculture. That's counterculture. Yeah. And it's okay to be counterculture. Yeah, you know? that's really good. And to, to let the word of the Lord just become life. Yeah. Because I think so many times we limit church to just serving or being kind right. or good citizens or whatever we think church being is obedient to, to be, yeah, yeah. trying to be good or obedient. And I think God's got so much more. And, you know, if you're listening today, it's your hunger that'll drive you yeah. into those places. Yeah. And don't be afraid of failing. You yeah. Know, practice it on a waitress or a waiter. Yeah. You know, just practice it and you'll get it wrong. You'll yeah. get it wrong, but it's okay to ask a question. I've done it before too, you know, and I'll practice on somebody and say, well, hey, do you have a daughter? You know, no, I got a son. <laughs> you know? I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> okay. That's, that's what I meant. That's what I meant to say. I just came out. <laughs> okay. Is he 16? Uh, no, he's three. <laughs> you know? I knew that too. Don't worry. Don't just, worry. Just practice the gift and grow and grow in it. And yeah. I, I think it's so important for pastors nowadays to just start training your people. Because entering into the supernatural, where it's where it's at, we've got to. And Tracy, you know what? Realm, I don't know, you know if God just, you know, there's a couple of illustrations. I got to talk to you about the prison. So if I forget, remind me of the 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 the, uh, the prison in in PA. Um, but well, why don't we just deal with that one right now? Because that was just so epic. Um, I went in. I got. I got. They they asked the the minister. Said, "Hey, could you go into the the correctional center?" So I said, "Sure, let's go in." So I went in on my own, actually, after the morning service, I just put on my, my blue jeans and my t-shirt and went there. I didn't take my Bible with me because they only gave me like half an hour and it was like 35, um, you know, most of them were gang members. So I was sitting in there and, and I was just sitting on the table and I said, I don't have the Bible with me. I said, you guys have all read the Bible, but I said, I've got it in here and I've only got 30 minutes with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pray about the gifts of the Spirit. And why don't we begin with you you right here? Because you're actually too old to be in here. You've been in and out. And I started to actually prophesy over this guy. And he was a, he was a very tall man. I said, could you open in prayer? And I gave them back their authority. Hmm. So I was no longer the authority. Yeah. Now you're the authority. You pray. And he stood up, Lonnie, and he prayed. And he sat down. I said, thank you, sir. Now it was quiet. I don't mean just there's no DB flowing in that room. I just mean it's quiet because the presence of God came in. I said, let's begin with you too. One of you is, is totally deaf in one of your ears. Which one is it? And he goes, it's me. I was hit in the head in, in a gang fight in the side of my head. I've been deaf for two years. And I said, could I pray with you? And he stood up and I just laid my hands on his ear, his deafened ear, and his, his ear popped open. Mm. I had seven gang members stand up immediately and walk to the front and form a lineup. Lonnie, the world is reachable. We've mm. just got to touch him with the love of Jesus. Mm. They've just got to see. You know, and some people have come to me and said, oh, you're just a showboat. You guys just, you guys, you evangelists, you just want to, you know, get out there and have a show and everything. And I said, you know what? Jesus operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Mm. When they birthed the New Testament church, it was birthed on the day of Pentecost. It was birthed through a Logos. It wasn't a Logos word. It was, it was a prophetic word Joel had spoken yeah. and said, your sons and daughters will Prophes prophesy. Dream. Your old men will dream, dream dreams. dreams. And I don't believe dreaming dreams actually, actually means that they have a dream. I believe that their inability their capacity to dream is resurrected because God comes on them. Because old men lose the ability to dream, especially if someone's watching right now and you've lost your ability to dream. I'm just going to agree with mm -hmm. you at the end of this broadcast that God is going to restore your ability mm -hmm. to dream. So old men will dream dreams, young men, young men will have visions. Mm -hmm. And even upon your handmaidens, God is going to 
prophesy. Pour out his spirit. So, yeah. so God does this in amazing ways, and and He did it in the prison. He He came and He fulfilled what He said He was going to do through His through His Word. And so religious people sometimes come and say, you know, we just need the presence of God, Kevin. We don't need the gifts of the Spirit here. But what the gifts of the Spirit are intended to do is to personalize things where people are broken, they're distraught, they're suicidal. You know, we we just went to a, a, a suicide funeral just a few weeks ago, a young man, but people need to see. The, the visibility of God needs to come to them in the ordinary walk of life, in the ordinary days of life. Mm-hmm. I'll share this other story. It happened in, in Regina, right near the University of U, U of R. <coughs> and I was um, I was with um, a good friend of mine down there who runs a prayer ministry. That's all he does seven days a week and operates in the gifts of the Spirit. And he's reaching out to the U of R. But I was sitting in the restaurant. There was family family restaurant, I think, right near the university. And he goes, are you going to do it or do you want me to do it? And I <laughs> be a little bit, you know, um, direct. And I said, I, I will do it. So the waitress came and um, I, I said, ma'am, um, um, have, you ever, have you ever considered knowing about your future? She goes, listen, I, I know about all that stuff and I, 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 I'm not really interested in talking to you about that. So do you want to just order your meal? And I said, okay, well, let's just order a meal. So... So I ordered the meal and she came back with the order and and I said, I said, the truth is, and I just began to prophesy. I said, the truth is you come in here night after night to um to do to do your your work as a waitress. And Friday night's usually your big night, but Friday night doesn't cut it anymore. In fact, this job doesn't cut it anymore, and you've lost total interest in this. And I see something about your children. I said, How many children do you have? She goes, Two. I said, Two boys? She said two boys, and I said, the younger one, though, seems older in this picture, and she looked at me. She said, he's 10. He's more mature than the older one. And I said, the Lord wants to tell you about your future right now, and he's revealed this because of your love. And Lonnie, she will never forget the time that we met, that mm-hmm. God would could be mm-hmm. with her Emmanuel, right? God with us. That's mm-hmm. what that word, that name Emmanuel means. And and so when people say to us sometimes, you know, the gifts of the spirit were for just then, maybe I could ask you, is it was it just in the in the Bible days of, of the book of Acts, or do we need the gifts of the spirit now? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's kind of the whole point of the, you know, wanting to do this is that yeah. The fact of the matter is, I like what you said, Teresa, taking the limits off. And I believe that we need to contend for these things, right? Yeah. I think a lot of times that that the gifts of the Spirit are sort of pushed to the parameters of, of, of a church. Right. Because either it's created trouble, a pastor's had trouble, you get people that won't listen, I operate, you don't know anything. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yes. And so then I'm going to have more trouble and more issues right. by allowing this. Well, and so I think lots of times it's just easier, you know what, let's just schedule it out, keep yeah. the people busy. Yeah. But I really feel, and you know, I love this verse in John um, 15, and I'm sure you've preached on this many times, Kevin, but in John 15, or actually 14 and verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Yes. And so, you know, Jesus said, you will know the Holy Spirit. Yes. You will know, so you're, you know, we're kind of talking and trying to explain what happens when, you know, the yeah. Holy Spirit, until you're ready to jump in and do it, you'll never know. But a That's lot right. of times you don't have anybody to talk about it. You don't have anybody to demonstrate it. You don't have anybody that really, you know, wants to, wants to flow and function in it. Right. You can go to a lot of churches, never see it. Yeah. And I just think that, you know, in the day that we're living in, and the hour, and you know, when this whole Corona thing started, yeah, I really felt impressed. We need the prophetic word of yes. God mm. to yes, be we strong, do. to yes. encourage yes. and exhort the body yes. and people, yeah. and have the just you know what, just the the everyday person uh, be able to know the Holy Spirit mm. and how He speaks. And you made a really great statement where He keeps you off balance because sometimes it, that's what it is. It's I've only had one open vision. So I can't claim to always have this open vision, yes. you know, that you see all the time. I don't. Many pictures, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Many impressions. Many very still, like just a still small voice that's 
just so quiet you could miss it. But when you're looking for it and you're wanting it, you know, yes. now you start to pay attention. Yes, that's that, right. You know, you can walk into a store and you can hear yeah. the voice of a friend and you go, I know who that is. Yeah. You can't see them. So good. But yes, I, I know that voice. So good. And so, you know, this is really what my heart is. And I know is your guys that we want the people of God to be empowered yeah. to know the voice of the Holy Spirit to be led not by, you know, rules and regulations and do's and don'ts. And I That's mean, right. yeah. that, you know, like we want to walk circumspectly, don't get me wrong, but we want to learn to be a people That's that right. can hear the spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know what? Maybe the way he works with you, he works differently with me. He doesn't have to work the same. That's right. Right? Yeah, yep. exactly. But what has to be the same is to be risk takers yeah. and be willing to take the limits off, right? Yeah. 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 And think, you know what? I know when uh, that's what I, I thought, you know what? I guess if I'm going to be stoned, it's going to be for wanting to be hungry and obedient. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, I guess I'll take it. But my hunger, oh, it outgrew my fear. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. And then I said, mm -hmm. man, you threw the limits off. Okay, Lord, you know, and it's not that when you, to, to flow in the gifts of the spirit, you become unteachable. Yeah. You become unreasonable, you become uh, yes. uh, arrogant, and maverick unto yourself yeah. that the pastor yeah. can kiss your boots now because you are the flowing Holy Ghost, <laughs> oh, whatever. You are the, the oracle church. of yeah. heaven. The oracle of heaven has showed up. <laughs> and that pastor, how fortunate could I be? Right. <laughs> and, uh, but yet, you know, we want people, whether, and, and I think, you know, from what you're talking about, this isn't just in a service where we finally get the music right, the lighting right, on, the yeah. sound right, the people right, the word right, and then finally maybe he'll do something. This should be able to work in the marketplace, in the prisons, mm -hmm. in the schools, everywhere, Lonnie, yes. in everywhere. the homes, in yes. the hospitals, on the sidewalk. I'm going to have to come back and on share task. with you again because I've, there's just, Every time you mention something like hospital, I was thinking about the psych ward and the last time we was down in the psych oh, yeah. ward and, and what God did because yeah. it just was turned upside down. The people were coming because they sensed God and they, they said, are you, are, you a, are you a believer? Are you a Christian? And they were grabbing my arm and they were asking for prayer. And I said Jamaica, to Jamaica, we turned the marketplace upside down. People were running. It was like Jesus yeah, too. Was, Wherever you go, it's just like, it's just, just there. creates life it's power. Just there. Yeah. It's there. Um, I wanted to share something on the dream part. And I hope I'm catching Holy Spirit right now by saying this. Um, my, my, um, I don't always say to my children, you know, did you dream? But I really believe that we, we, we need to regain and recapture the time that we're resting because we're actually replenishing when we're, re when we're sleeping. So if we're replenishing, which was a whole purpose of the Sabbath is to rest, but not passively rest, but replenish. So I said to my daughter this one morning, I said, did you dream anything last night by any chance? And she goes, yes, I did. And I don't ask her all the time about this, Lonnie, but that night um, I was up late at night and, you know, the, the word just was elusive for me that night. And I, and I'm sitting there, you know, and it's kind of like a, a, a nightmare because <laughs> you're thinking, well, I can still preach a word, but this is not really grabbing my heart. And so that night I, I got, I felt I got the word on the serpent on the, the, the pole. And, um, and so, you know, and the scripture says, look and live. And so, and Jesus himself talked about this in, in the new Testament. And so it was a story about the serpent and looking and living, looking into the eyes of Jesus. And we need a fresh vision looking into the eyes of Jesus. And that's what they were asked to do. If they could just look into his eyes, which was the message in the Old Testament and the New, Jesus said the same thing. The word is gaze and it means to lock in, that we're locked in mm -hmm. and we can hear him, we can see him. And we just go into that place, that, that secret place God's called us into. So anyways, my daughter said that morning, I had a dream and dad, the dream was about um, a serpent. And I went, stop. I said, can you, she, and what happened was, remember the slide projectors, you know, they would just click and then you click and it was yeah. on a carousel, you know, turn around. Well, the, the first clip the Lord showed me was a picture of this, this, I, I described this to my daughter and I said, can you tell me the texture of the snake's skin? And she said, it's kind of like, kind of like, and I said, like a f artificial worms you go fishing with. She goes, exactly. 
And I said, it wasn't actually like a snake. It was like a, it was like a, a big fat worm. And it had two darting eyes, round eyes, and it kind of had a smile, but it was not kind of like a goofy smile. It was kind of like a smile like you, you know there's authority in this, this serpent. And, and then in the, in the next slide, there was three of them. In the next slide, the, the serpent leaps to, to the side. And in the third, third picture, the third frame, because I'm explaining this and God's actually giving me frames, the, um, the snake um, runs up the pole and wraps himself around the, the pole and looks down. Well, what did I preach on that morning? Look and live, mm. the serpent on the pole. And, and so um, my, the whole point of this is that young men will have uh, visions and old men will dream dreams. But see, we can still be young. She was only how old when she had that, that dream? Probably 14, 15. 14 or 15 yeah. years old. What do our children need? They need yeah. dreams. Mm -hmm. They need dreams. They, they mm -hmm. come on. It's not just Marvel. I mean, Marvel can only do so much. Yeah. And then when you find out about digital cartoons and how they're created, it just doesn't kick anymore. And so, and so you have this generation and instead of the make-believe, we need to really capture the superheroes of our generation. We need to recapture the superheroes in scripture and the real life figures like yourself, Lonnie, where we, we can, I can say to my son, you know what, when, when Brother Lonnie comes, uh, Justice, I want you to believe for a word. I want you to believe that God is going to be in our midst. And, and so that morning, she will, these are God moments that will never, ever leave these people. And they leave an impression in her children's heart yeah. that you cared enough to ask me. Did I have a dream? Mm -hmm. And God invaded her world that morning. So, yeah. Well, you know, that's in, and we only have a little bit left, but I love between 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14 is 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah. And that the love, you know, is where these gifts flow through yes. because of love and compassion for people, not as badges of honor or, that's you right. know, look at me, but that we know that we need to be able to do ministry our kids need to be able to do ministry and experience the reality yes, of yeah. Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit because they want a real experience. You know, they get a real experience with drugs. They get a real experience That's with right. demonic. Yep. They need a real experience mm -hmm. with the genuine power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have a hunger and a desire for it, why Why would they, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so why don't you just with the last little bit, Kevin, just speak, you know, to the yeah. audience, whoever it is, whatever yeah. the Lord puts on your heart and uh, and lead us in a short prayer. And maybe you have something as well, yeah. Teresa, I don't know. And, uh, you know, let's just let's just close on this note of asking God to yeah. to do in the next generation what he's doing, mm. you know, has done in yeah. you guys, right? Is doing, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brother Lonnie. Father, we just want to thank you so much right now that you have everything in control and that this is the most epic generation and time we yes. could possibly imagine. And what the devil has meant for destruction in ushering in things through, through social media and news media and all these different forms of trying to, to, to bring warnings and maybe people responding in fear. We just acknowledge you right now, yes. Lord, that you are the answer. You are the one who comes and you bring dimension to yourself. You cause us to see you in the way that you want to, that you are the voice of the supernatural. Yes. You yeah. are the voice from heaven. You are the one who, who confirms you, that you are Jesus. And Lord, we thank you right now that, that your name is Jesus. God, you have a name. You are not nameless. You came mm. to the earth in the form of a man, That's and right. you declared yourself as Savior and Lord and healer and provider. So right now, I pray and agree with those that are viewing this and watching that they will be drawn in to a place of believing also. They will acknowledge yes. you as That's being right. the author and the finisher of their faith. And Father, that they would they would come into this relationship where no longer would they, the, would they sway and and, and, and respond with fear to this hour, but they would be drawn into the kingdom of God. Yes. They would be builders of your kingdom and they would acknowledge 
the greatness of who you are. I pray that you would put in joy, you would put in in, in strength, you would put well, you would put dimension yes, into Lord. our lives that we wouldn't just be trying to be obedient people all the time, just obeying the laws. But in the law, you breathe life in the New yes. Testament, and you gave us the hope that we needed. That's right. So we acknowledge you right now Thank as the you, God Lord. with dimensions, the height, the width, the length, and the surpassing depth of His love, Lonnie. The love mm. of God, Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. That's good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Well, it's been a pleasure to have both of you. Thank you so much. Thank it you, It took Lonnie. me a long time to get them. Come on. It's snowing tonight. It it's is crazy. Snowing. It's and a I bit thought, of a blizzard out there. It is. And I thought, no, you're going to do this, whether we don't get home tonight <laughs> or not. You are going to do this. There you go. And uh, we would love to have you Thank back. You. We so Wonderful. enjoy it. It's been a I, pleasure and you know, with you. They're both musicians and Teresa's lit on the piano when wow. it comes to yeah. song. Yeah. Uh, so maybe she'll come back and we'll hey. set up the piano and hey, have that you. Be awesome. That'd be wonderful. Wouldn't that be good? Wonderful. Okay, maybe we'll lure them back like that. So uh, a big God bless. Yes. Uh, keep your eye on the channel. And thanks so much again, guys. Take care. Thank you for having us.